The life of a death row inmate is now in the hands of the Supreme Court. In 1995, Dwayne Buck killed his former girlfriend and her friend. He has been fighting his death sentence for years, saying it was based in part on racial prejudice. That's because a psychologist told jurors Buck posed a greater threat to society because he was black. Now it looks like the Supreme Court may be willing to give Buck another chance. CBS News Justice reporter Paula Reed is in our Washington Bureau and joins us now. Paula, uh, what kind of attorney would introduce racist information about his client? It's a great question, Vlad. It won't surprise you to know that this attorney is now considered, looking back, one of the worst death penalty attorneys in U.S. history. In fact, the New York Times did a profile on him, dubbing him the man known for losing capital cases. So it's not surprising that many of his clients have asked for and received new hearings, either whole trials or sentencing hearings. And that's why Mr. Buck believes he, too, should get a new sentencing hearing. And Paula, you were at the Supreme Court on Wednesday. I saw your Facebook Live. How did the judges react to Dwayne Buck's case? Why they were very sympathetic across the board. Just as Sotomayor has really carved out a place for herself on race issues at the high court. She was clearly on his side, but even Chief Justice Roberts noted this is a very unique case about the Constitution and about your right to be sentenced regardless of your race. Justice Alito noted that the case was bizarre and the facts of the case were indefensible. But both just Chief Justice Roberts and Justice Alito, they said that even if they were to side for Mr. Buck, even if they were to give him a win here and potentially get him a new sentencing hearing, they want it to be narrow. They do not, they said, want to open the floodgates to all these people asking for new sentencing hearings if they've received the death penalty. So the point here is that the death penalty in this case, but does it signal that the court is willing to take up the issue? Well, this case specifically is, of course, about bad lawyering and about the procedure, the administrative hurdles you have to get over if you had a bad lawyer to get any sort of relief. But they did sort of touch on this question of whether or not the court should take up the issue of the death penalty. Uh, Justices Ginsburg and Breyer have both said that they believe maybe it is time for the justices to revisit this issue. But Justice Breyer says he doesn't believe the court will actually abolish the death penalty in his lifetime. But all of that really underscores the importance of that missing ninth justice. Whoever he or she is could have a really important role if they did take up that issue again. And Paula, so the court now has eight justices following Antonin Scalia's death. And President Obama's nominee for the court, Merrick Garland, he's not been given a hearing on that vacant seat. So will that have any impact, the absence of a justice on this case? It could. If the court splits 4-4, which we saw last term that did happen, that affirms the lower court's ruling. And that means that Mr. Buck has no hope virtually of ever getting a new sentencing hearing. But it appeared that the justices were on his side. We're likely to give him a victory in this case. But even then, it's a long road for him to get a new sentencing hearing. Even if he gets one, he could potentially get the same sentence. He could potentially be sentenced to death in this case. But Vlad, I talked to his stepsister at the court today. She was actually shot back in 1995 when he committed these murders. She believes that he is a changed man. She said he was on drugs at the time that he committed this crime. She said that during his time in prison, he's had a perfect record. And she believes that he would be given a life sentence and not the death penalty if he does get a new hearing. All right, Paula Reed following the story for us in Washington. Thanks, Paula. Thank you.